Commissioner uh, Yower? Here. Commissioner Rosales? Here. Judge Shaw is here. Commissioner uh, Dignett? Here. Commissioner Schindel? Here. Please join and stand as an open hearing. State the Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of our blessings. We thank you for the freedom you enjoy. We ask that you be with us today, that we consider the business of the county. I ask that everyone be respectful in our discourse. We ask that you remember us in our need for rain. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, Charlie. Uh, before you citizens to be heard, I want to move our auditors need to be back in San Antonio. So please, let's let them present the audit so they can go back. They have another appointment. Go ahead, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Judge, commissioners, good to see you guys. Um, a couple of things we handed out the big, big packet. Uh, has some fun, uh, financial statements in there. There's a letter on conduct of audit, but I think we'll just go through the, uh, the PowerPoint. Uh, there you go. Yeah. And again, ask questions as, uh, as they come up, but uh, I'll just go through the page. Page two, what's in the annual financial report? kind of an overview of the items that are in there, um, the independent auditor's report, um, and then the various financial statements, and uh, page three, the independent auditor's report, what you hire us for, um, we uh, perform the audit in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards. This uh, purpose is to form an opinion on the financial statements and determine whether they're in compliance with generally accepted accounting principles. Based on the audit that we did, we were issuing an unqualified opinion. Uh, that is the best opinion we can give and basically says that those financial statements as they're presented in the bound uh, document are in compliance with generally accepted accounting principles. So, and that's consistent with what we've been giving the county in the last several years. The management discussion analysis, um, as we look at the report that there will be uh, right after the auditor's of, uh, opinion, gives a brief overview of the county's fiscal year. So if you don't want to take the time or you really don't understand the financial statements that are presented, that's a good area to go to and kind of get a feeling of how the county did. It provides both the, the government-wide information and fund level information at, at a good um, overview level. So, uh, just some, some of the things that are in that management discussion and analysis on page five, some of the financial highlights. On the combined full accrual basis, that's at your government-wide level, your assets exceed your liabilities by $16 million, of which 3.7 of that is invested in capital assets. Um, you're, you have 948 that are restricted for specific purposes. You got 11.3 million of unrestricted uh, net assets, which are available for the county's continued operations. Total net assets for the year increased 6.9 million. Your unrestricted net assets increased 4.5 million from last year. This was a, was a good fis fiscal year for the county. Page six, again, this is just some broad overview of the financial statements. Your government-wide financial statements, which are on page four and five of the bound document, those provide a, a broad overview of the, uh, of the county's operations. It's on a full accrual basis, meaning your, your capital assets and your debt are presented on that statement as well as all the funds combined into a single uh, reporting uh, line item. Uh, and your expenses, they're shown by function. So again, that, the, the big thing there is that it's, uh, it's full accrual. It's not really how you budget. Page seven, your fund financial statements, this is how you budget, this is how you're kind of used to seeing your, uh, your monthly financial information. Um, your governmental funds, you have two, two major funds, your general fund, which is always a major fund, and your road and bridge fund. And then on that, that uh, statement, you also have a column for non-major funds, which is a consolidation of all your special revenue funds and your debt service fund. Um, page eight and nine, just some of the other parts of the, uh, the financial statements. The notes to the financial statement, 
um, they, they're on pages 15 through 31. They provide um, uh, more detail on the financial information that's in the statements. Um, and they also summarize your significant accounting policies. <clears throat> your required supplementary information um, is your funding progress from Texas County and District Retirement System. That's on page 32. It just shows where, where, you, uh, where your retirement system is and where it's been the last two years. So it gives us some good information on the, uh, the, uh, the, the funding progress of your retirement system. Now on page 9, your supplementary information uh, we provide a schedule that combines all your special revenue funds and your debt service fund on page 33 through 45. We also provide some budget to actual schedule <coughs> so that you can see how you did compared to the budget that you approved. On page 10, required communication. Uh, we're required to communicate in certain things to you, the commissioners, um, and us, the uh, independent auditors. Uh, our responsibility is to, uh, to audit your financials in accordance with generally accepted uh, auditing standards. Um, significant accounting policies, if you had any changes in your accounting policies, we're required to report that to you. There were no changes in your accounting policies for the fiscal year. Uh, management judgments and estimates, your financial statements have certain estimates in there which the actual results may differ from your estimates. Um, the primary one is your accumulated depreciation. It's based on uh, the useful lives of your assets. Uh, we've assessed management's uh, reasonableness for their, their useful lives and, and concluded that, that those were reasonable lives for those assets. Difficulties in, in uh, encountering and performing the audit, if we had any difficulties with management, we were required to report that to you. We did. Management uh, provided us all the information that we needed to uh, to perform the audit in accordance with our standards. Disagreements with management, if we disagreed on accounting policies, uh, we were required to report that to you. We had no disagreements. Um, and then auditing journal entries, there, there were certain journal entries that we, uh, we encountered during the result of our audit. We posted all those and they're reflected appropriately in the, uh, the final financial statement. So. Uh, and then comments and recommendations, we did have uh, one comment they were related to justice of the piece one, uh, two, and four. Um, the timely deposits of their cash receipts were not in accordance with the, the local government code, and so we've made a comment regarding that. So, with that, uh, number four is new. Um, yeah, the, no, he, he just came two in. is a repeat, and four is mm -hmm. is new for yes, this year. With that, I'll, I'll take any questions. Commissioner Schmidt. Thank you. The, uh, on the receipts, was it just checks and cash money orders, or how was that? I, I believe it was both cash and, and checks, yes. Number 
21 is to discuss, approve, disapprove the request from Energy Lodge Kennedy LLC, a Texas limited liability company, to abandon the 50 foot wide way of an abandoned road, commonly known as the Old Kennedy Road, Corn City Road, or K2 Road, and then deed without warranty a portion of the abandoned roadway to Energy Lodge Kennedy LLC, 6 South First Street, Temple, Texas, 76501. Survey reflects 0 0.076 acres of land situated just north of the city of Kennedy. Parnes County, Texas, is being a portion of the old abandoned 50 foot wide county road. Yes, this is not the first time that the commission report is deep part of this road. That the neighboring property, Texas Lodge, was deep part of that road to them from here in December. And this is from there to all the way to 181. And it's where the pictures were there. This Property has been used before by the previous owners a little bit by them, so this is just kind of clear up the title so they can fully develop there. They've already got a lodge there. They're looking to do maybe some more development, but they would need that additional area. I was unable to locate the original deed on where Carnes County got, got the property. So this is the best way to get it back out of the Carnes County ownership into the land. <coughs> do y'all have any questions? I do. I don't have this question. Yes, I have one question about it. Uh, when this property goes back from the, from the county, do the mineral rights already belong to the state? Are they going back to the landowner now? Or is that in, any change in that? It, it was never a county road. It was what? an easement. It was never a county road. It was, it, it, it was only an easement. Okay. Yes, sir. If it was only an easement, I don't see a problem with the problem. No, we already gave the other half that. Yeah. This is the other side. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Can I? I'll make a motion to approve the request. You can say request. as written. Yes, yeah, as so written. No, I'm not going to read Thank it all right. <laughs> as, as agenda item presented. I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Motion carries 5 to do you have a copy of the machine without working? Do you possibly have two? I don't know. You know what? Let me get back here. I can't hear back here. There's a copy machine right back there. You want another copy too? Yes, sir. And we're going to go ahead without you. Number 22 is going to be discuss, approve, disapprove a request by Lucy F. Jolloway, trustee of the Lucy F. Jolloway Trust, to abandon the 0.34 acres right away out of the Don Erasmus Seguin Grant abstract number 10 in Carnes County, Texas, and a portion of the county road within the town of Hops in Carnes County, Texas, and then deed without warranty a portion of the abandoned roadway to Lucy F. Jolloway, trustee of the Lucy F. Jolloway Trust. The abandoned road joins the Jalloway Trust properties, and that is Mr. Jalloway. Where are you? There you are. I don't know if you want these. First item is I just showed the uh, power of attorney that I can have the authority to represent my mother in this uh, uh, activity. The uh, document number two, just to give you a, a visual orientation, is uh, Hobson, town of Hobson, and then uh, document number three is a, uh, a visual of the actual property. <coughs> document number four, and if I'm going too fast, just tell me to slow down. Uh, document number four is the plat of the uh, block Q, which is her property. <coughs> and then document number five is a plat of the 0.34 acres, which is the right of way that, that's in question. Then document number six is the uh, deed without warranty that we're requesting uh, be approved by, by the commissioners. Uh, the 0.34 acres is, is a area that has been in place uh, probably prior to World War II. Uh, my uh, grandfather purchased this land from um, uh, Ed Tyner, who was the uh, uh, druggist in Hobson 
uh, at that time. This was, he purchased this land in the early 50s. So it's been occupied by our family for about 50 to 60 years uh, and has never been used as a, uh, as a county road or any kind of uh, upkeep or maintenance. It's, it's been, we always thought it was part of the property. So I guess that's what we're trying to do is uh, bring this forward as a, uh, uh, just to get everything set up correctly. Jeff, when you were up there as county commissioner years and years ago, y'all never did anything to this uh, road. That, that road has, a, and I think Mr. Yard knows also that road has a, there's big mesquite trees in that road. As a young man uh, going to Mr. Fogel's house there, uh, Mike Fogel owned it. Uh, I never remember that road uh, uh, being a road there. The road was always there where it's at now. I, uh, and I've been around for 50, 58 years, so I, ne I don't remember a road either. You don't have to tell us anything. No. <laughs> yeah. So there's never been an issue to use that road. They always come no, around sir. to get to the other yes, one. Sir. Hold on, Brenda wanted to ask a question. Which kind of road are we talking about? Make sure we don't have people in that No, there's nothing. That Which road. Which kind of road is it? So? Uh, what what's in front of your mama's house there? Okay. It does, this road don't have a number. It's three seventy two. That one, the one in front. The one in front, but the, that road does not have a number on it. Yeah, I think it does. Mm. Not that abandoned road. It don't. Hmm? Not that not the road. That property they run uh, in front of Remember, their house. The, the road comes right up by the post office and goes up there where it turns the corner. Who owns the property behind there? Uh, where that abandoned road is, because I can see here a line of trees here where the road goes, but who owns the, the field behind it? It's not Krushak. Krushak, yeah. Yes. Krushak. Are they aware? Are out. they aware that we want that oh, this yeah. came up to court? Yeah, I talked to them there one day on the road and stuff, and I told him it's coming up. He said that's nothing to concern him because his is on the other side of the brush line. Are we talking about the part of three seventy two that's actually out of the town side of the house? Yeah. Yes. I think to, if I remember right, to legally do it, we have to have a written, a written paperwork from him since his is attached to that county road that he's okay with it. He's the only one, or they're, they're the only ones that attach to that county road behind y'all's property. Right. Well, we have to post, we have to post it. What is, if it's a county road, it has to be posted for two weeks and then he has to come up, we have to have something written from him or her or whoever it may be that if they're okay with it that way we can close it because if, if your property was behind there and we just closed it in between your both properties we'd be fine but because someone is adjacent to that we can't just do that here okay. well because then it's a right away it's not an easy it's not like okay. the one that we just did it becomes different you have to publish a public notice okay. you know what um mr foster did one last year sometime from Reddy. You can go back in the records and review it and see how he did it, and that can give you some guidance. Up. Okay. All right. We don't have a problem with it. It's just as long as we have. Foster's first name. Can, can, can I? Yes, you have your you have your paperwork all in order here for what we need. Yes. Okay. It, it, it looks all in order to me. Should all right. Be. So we. I'm not going to keep your originals. That way, you'll have that. Okay. <coughs> And then the, yes. uh, I don't remember whatever format that, that uh, he, he did this in and then go from there. Yes, yes sir. Okay. All right, thank sorry, you very much. Sorry about that. That was 22. Uh-huh. Okay, somebody else had to be. Who else was living? Was it you all right? No, I'm, I'm good. You're good? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty close to the front end. Okay, then let's go back to Citizens to be Heard. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Carnes County Commission Court has never had an agenda item or approved a motion to hire Denton Navarro and the other attorneys to provide any legal services for Carnes County. The same question was also asked by Commissioner James was also Mr. Hyde and George Hyde during his last visit. Mr. Hyde responded, yes, they have a contract. I have reviewed every Carnes County Commission Court agenda since uh, January 2011 to the present. There has never been an agenda item to hire Dickens and Navarro, and 
Carnes County has, the county has no contract for legal services with Denton and Navarro for any type of legal services. During the budget meetings, when the subject was presented to the budget for outside the legal counsel, the question was asked, and the presiding officer stated, I am entitled to outside legal counsel. In response to her statement, she, as a county judge, is not entitled to outside legal counsel. Carnes County and the Commission's Court is, if the situation arises. It is my guess that almost all legal services to date have been requested by the presiding officer and that the Carnes County Commission Court has improperly authorized payments to the law firm of Denton and Navarro for between an estimated $70,000 to $100,000. The County Auditor's Office can provide a more accurate account. All of those payments for legal services are in fact unauthorized, improper, and possibly fraudulent. As with any other county expenditure, approval must be granted by the Commission Court prior to contracting or incurring any change in charges for services. Because of the outrageous amount I estimate to have been paid to Denton and Navarro, it may be criminal conduct on the part of the presiding officer. Further, it is my opinion that it is also an abuse of her office. In addition, the presiding officer has no judicial or statutory authority to request outside legal counsel without the Commission Court approval prior to any request for outside legal counsel. The county judge, as with any other elected official, is required to obtain Commission Court approval prior to soliciting or paying for any type of service, and that all of the legal services and payments to Denton and Navarro were improper or illegal is, in my opinion, the presiding officer should be paid every dollar to Carnes County. Because of the presiding officer's complete disregard of the law, her continuing display of incompetence, and the continuing discredit she brings upon the judiciary, and the citizens of Carnes County, and to best serve the citizens of Carnes County, Barbara Shaw should resign immediately as a county judge. Thank you. Shanna Hall. Good morning. One thing I'd like to express, I'm kind of glad we got to start a little bit before we got to speak because I can tell you we can't hear anything you were saying or the speakers were saying. It's, it's totally, you're, we're totally unable to hear back there. So I don't know if it's a microphone issue or an acoustic issue in here, but if we're going to conduct the future reports in here, we're going to have to do something about the hearing and you probably might want to check your maximum capacity too. Okay, thank you. Sorry um, about that. Well, it's just facts. Um, one of the things I want to address real quickly is uh, I think that you all should review your abatement guidelines that are being on the agenda item today very clearly. Um, having looked at those briefly, there's a lot of negligent issues in there for the safety issues of our county, representing our county and not the other end of an abatement issue. Um, we've actually gone into some other abatements in other counties and found simplified rules, real clear rules, real basic rules that pertain to the number of people employed in the county, things that are missing in your rough draft of abatement issue. And you really need to read through that lengthy document, wordy document that has a lot of <coughs> faults from the eye of, of the citizens. Um, I also wanted to speak to you today about the agenda item concerning the uh, road and bridge. Approximately 45% of Carnes County is occupied by permanent rural taxpaying citizens. Citizens who suffered from bad roads before the Eagleford Shell and who paid property taxes will now pay even a larger portion of the tax base in this county. And if you live in rural areas, you know that. Realizing that efforts are being made to obtain money from the state's rainy day fund, which is a portion of the state severance tax, Many amendments and proposals are being put before the legislature right now to distribute a part of, that, part of that severance tax funds back to the counties who are suffering from the adverse conditions of the Eagleford Shell with respect to the road and bridges in all of those counties. The idea of obtaining these funds is very questionable, if not unlikely. If you read, and I, I, I implore you to read, there is a wonderful document put out by the Railroad Commission. It's a 155-page document that addresses the Eagle Shell. Shell. Multiple articles I have found in the Houston Chronicle addressing the Eagle Shell. Shell. Here's one on Texas County Progress Magazine. Very informative articles about what the legislation, what is happening, what's being presented with our road and bridges. Uh, 
per se, the Houston Chronicle article I just read, $5.4 billion is going back into the education budget. $4.5 billion is going into the state's unpaid Medicaid bill. We only have an $8.8 .8 billion surplus. Everybody's asking for that. The idea that they're going to give us a portion of the rainy day fund or the severance tax fund is not looking very positive. Taking these Ms. facts. Ball, I'm sorry, that's three minutes. Really? Yes. Wow. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Ramirez. Good morning. Basically, what we have been uh, doing, and as uh, our Judge Shaw knows and the Commissioner's Court, is uh, we have been, uh, we are a concerned group of citizens that are against the injection well that, uh, that is right now being presented to the Railroad Commission. And exactly, I don't know when they're going to make a decision that uh, our attorneys are going to inform us as to when they, the Railroad Commission will be uh, making a decision to, to determine whether the injection well is going to be permitted. Uh, last night, uh, Mrs. Moy and Eric Opiella and myself were sent in front of the Energy Board in uh, Austin. And they were very receptive uh, to our concerns. Uh, we explained to them exactly what's happening down here. And I, I, you know, I'm kind of sympathetic to Mrs. Hall and her concerns of uh, other issues that come that have arose due to the Eagle Fort Shell. Uh, we, as a county, as a community, I don't think we were prepared for everything that's going in our community. I mean, we have been blessed. However, there are other issues that have, as we, uh, as a group of concerned citizens, we've been expressing to the city and the county uh, of uh, maybe making, uh, maybe coming together as citizens and implementing some kind of city and uh, city rules, county rules, we, when we presented last night, the Energy Committee was very receptive. And uh, Representative Lozano out of Bee, Bee County and other representatives were asking us numerous questions regarding uh, this proposed injection well. Uh, and they also gave us uh, advice and they told us that we are more than welcome to, several of them gave us their telephone number to see how they could help us. Um, Mrs. Moy is going to uh, share more information with you all regarding as to what took place last night. But one last comment I'm gonna ask or share or request. We are on the agenda for April the 9th, I believe, to see how, um, see if the commissioner's court can send a representative a week before the railroad commission makes their decision uh, they will have a meeting where they will listen to the concerned citizens the three commissioners the railroad commissioners will listen to concerned citizens and uh, we're here to just make y'all aware that we will be returning on April 9th to see if uh, the commissioner's court can select someone to come on our behalf and uh, and represent the county. And that's, Mrs. Moy will share more. Yeah, when they expect the expected expect day of a decision? Did they give y'all a decision? No, day? no, they will, um, as, as y'all are aware, there's so many injection wells that are being permitted and there's just bombarded, the railroad commission is just bombarded with so much work that, uh, I'm thinking they're saying towards the end of April, but maybe early May. And um, but uh, we, as of right now, don't know that date. But hopefully by April 9th, when we come back and and, and ask to see, you know, if if uh, there could be some type of representation from the commissioner's board. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. This morning. Good morning. 
I come here today just to give you a little brief synopsis of what, what we testified on yesterday. Um, I'll just briefly just give you the idea of what we said. Uh, I said I want resident of Clarence County and a neighbor to a proposed oil injection waste well and truck washing station just outside our city that is opposed by numerous groups including the city council. It's a high traffic intersection across from 181 where there's adjacent preschool, Church of Christ, Pentecostal Church, and residential area. We have been blessed by the development of the oil and gas industry in Carnes County and the entire Eagle Ford Shell over the past two years, and we hope it will continue in the future. That said, we wanted to let you know that everything is not blazes down here. We have a variety of operators in the Shell that range in credibility and experience from legitimate, responsible companies to small fly-by-night operators that come in from out of state that have no concerns for our really respect for our, our city. And it, seems to tend to make a bad influence and makes the oil and gas industry look bad. Due to the Texas Supreme Court holding in the 2011 case Railroad Commission versus Texas State for a safe, clean water, the Railroad Commission currently does not have the power to consider the concerns of neighboring landowners and, and as to whether the use of installation of an oil field waste injection well is in a public interest and should be approved. We were asking the committee to consider an amendment to House Bill 2166 to clarify that the Railroad Commission can consider whether an injection well is in the public interest, especially in cases like ours, where our legislatures, our county, and our city have all expressed concern to the location and operation of this well that is clearly not in the public interest. And as we spoke with them, they really became very concerned about this, the particular location. We stressed that we were not against injection wells per se, but that we do need to have some guidelines. And so this is, you become very weary fighting this battle. But we must, we must continue with this because the legislation is not there to allow the people to help. Even though they want to help, they're tied by their hands. And so the laws must be changed. They must find a way to still let our county continue to grow and flourish, but protect what we've got and we've all worked so hard for. So we're asking you to, wanted to let you know where we are with this, and we're asking you if you would please help send us a, a representative from the county up to when we speak before the Railroad Commission the, the week before we have our hearing date. Uh, several of the Representatives spoke last night and asked us if we would let them know when our hearing is coming up because they're very interested in being a part of that. And um, Eric read a, read a letter from uh, Mayor Tamrock last night as well as uh, Dina and I testifying. And so uh, I want to tell you and caution you also, when you elect your people that are going to represent you, you need to Select so those people that are going to be there for you and not just come in the day before election and, and, and say, you know, I'm, I'm here. Because it is virtually very hard to get in to meet with senators and legislatures and there's a this and a this. And they send you in a big, big vicious circle going around until you, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, wh where are we going with this? But you know what? I am not going to give up. I am going because I have a love of this county and I'm not giving up. And neither is Dina. So thank you and please consider when we come back on March, I mean on April the 9th, please consider sending somebody up there with us too. It will make it better for our county. I know. Thank you. Thank you, boys. Thank you, Carol. Betty Yarder. <coughs> <coughs> tax abatement is to attract businesses to the county that will provide quality, long-term jobs for our residents and increase the tax base. For our tax abatement guidelines and criteria must address the industries that will benefit Carnes County and the citizens of Carnes County. Carnes County's good fortune won't last forever and we need other industries to, to sustain the economy's economic viability. A critical component of tax abatement is compliance. 
And with the abatement tax basis and the ability of Carnes County to recapture those taxes if the companies fail to perform as they promised in their agreement. This court continues to <coughs> ignore its responsibility to the taxpayers because it has never delegated the responsibility of abatement compliance. So please appoint someone. As a taxpayer, it is a major concern that our county government has spent thousands of dollars on legal fees related to tax abatement. It has approved hundreds and thousands, maybe even millions of dollars in abated taxes. Our county government has never inspected a single facility and pursuant to the Texas tax code, the annual inspection is required by statute. As taxpayers, we are checking, checking for compliance of our agricultural and homestead exemptions and if we don't pay our taxes on time, then we're sued and we're collected. So it, we must, these guys are getting a, basically a free tax ride. So until that compliance, we need to make sure that they're in compliance in order to recapture those taxes if, if they're not. During a committee report <coughs> meeting this past year, Mr. Henderson and our financial advisor stated that Florence County did not need any additional tax abatements at that time. Guidelines and criteria are necessary, however, and if something outstanding comes along, we can legally negotiate with the company. We do not need these guidelines that are currently being promoted by the law firm of Denton and Navarro and Judge Shaw. These proposed guidelines have numerous typographical substantive mistakes, and there are questionable modifications. I've given you several examples here, but with the time constraints, you can read them. As commissioners, you should look at, at amending the substantive parts of the guidelines. The amount to be invested for tax abatement consideration should be in increased. And the number of jobs required for tax abatement consideration needs to be modified. It should reflect a mandatory number of jobs, such as 25%, which is what Bear County's does, to uh, be created and fulfilled by Carnes County residents, not just created, but they must be filled by Carnes County residents. At least a certain percentage of them should be. And then you need to have something on the types of salaries, maybe even health care benefits, such as what Bear County does. Bear County's abatement, abatement guidelines are, are only four pages long. Cover page makes them five pages. So I think that we could come up with something, and they're very clean, very precise, and they're available on the Internet for free. So the public information, I think we can find something that would make it easier. The suggested guidelines are poorly written and by the same law firm who wrote the old ones. You should check around and see what other neighbor and counties guidelines contain. It is public information and even available for free on the internet. On March 13, 2012, the same law firm, with full knowledge that our guidelines had expired, presented the tax abatement proposal to the commissioner's court on behalf of energy transfer parties. Denton and Navarro still say this uh, says this conduct would be classified as illegal because our guidelines expired on February the 12th of 2012. According to the law firm's view, tax abatement negotiations without current guide, guidelines and criteria, criteria should make the court members who participated in the tax negotiations guilty of criminal, criminal misconduct. The law firm continued to negotiate until November 30th of 2012. The court continued to pay their fees. I wonder if it's legal. You should no vote no on these proposed guidelines. Thank you. I signed up to speak also. The Texas Association of Counties describes the structure of county government this way. 
the Texas Constitution established a strong system of checks and balances by creating independent elective offices in each county. In Texas, county government delivers services through a variety of elected officials rather than through one central authority. In order to prevent any one office from having too much authority, the Texas Constitution carefully crafted a system in which none of the county's elected officials is controlled by any other elected official. They answer only to the voters. Several attorney general opinions on various matters state, an elected county officer occupies a sphere of authority within which another officer may not interfere or usurp. Many years ago, when computers were first being used to conduct business, there was much resistance. People felt more comfortable doing things the way they always had. But over time, computers took over many tasks in many places, making these easier and quicker. Then came email. People were uncomfortable at first. How could they be sure that what they were sending was being received? But again, with time, email became the choice of communication for many businesses and individuals. It saves time and can reach many people instantly. Now we have social media. Yes, people create accounts and log on for personal use, communication with family, games, etc. But it has also become another choice for communication. Updates, newsletters, events, all these things can be posted on social media pages for consumers and citizens to see. Jury cancellations, meetings, food bank times. Alerts can be triggered so that folks can see what's happening immediately. Many companies and businesses are using these to publish office hours, fees, closings, employee recognition, etc. Schools are posting calendars, events, and reminders. Many of us do not have access to the county website, so creating a page and being able to update it frequently is more convenient for us. Yes, schools do certain levels of blocking regarding the internet, but that is mostly for the students. Teachers and administrators are allowed to have more discretion because of their position in the school. We, the elected officials, are adults. We are elected by the citizens to carry out the duties assigned to us by the statutes. The internet is just another resource to use to improve and enhance our services to Carnes County. I agree that there should be a policy in place in the employee handbook that addresses the use of county computers, the internet, etc. But it should be left to the department, supervisor, or elected official to monitor their own employees and take the appropriate action as necessary. You, the members of the court, have made many decisions over the course of the last two years that have moved this county forward in numerous ways. Please allow the rest of the elected officials to do this for their respective departments. Barbara, you stated in a debate during your campaign that there were two misconceptions regarding the county judge's position. One of these was that the county judge had the, did not have the authority to tell other county officials what to do. But isn't that what you were trying to do today? Thank you. <coughs> Bye. Good morning. Uh, I'm Good gonna morning. kinda have to ditto on Bruce Hall. It's very difficult to hear back there. I'm a very loud person, so I'm sure everybody can hear me quite well. Amen. And we really need to check the occupancy level on this. We already have a fire alarm system that is not hooked up. It's 30 persons. I think we have like 35 or 36 in here right now. Just kind of uh, back up, Carol, on the social media uh, situation. There is a There was a webinar last Thursday that I had cause only listened to, for whatever reason, I couldn't actually listen, see the... Uh, slideshow on my computer, but they did email it to me from TAC. Social media is very popular right now. It's something that many counties have, but some of them don't have. It's a way to communicate quickly to your citizens. It's also a way to um, put out any type of information on meetings, the food bank, uh, things like that. I agree with Carol, there needs to be a policy. We did have a policy presented that was not passed a couple of years ago on uh, electronic monitoring on computers, fax machines, uh, postage machines, and th things like that. I agree we are adults. Uh, if my uh, employee is on Facebook, Twitter, blog, for too long of a period of a time, she will be disciplined, but that's my job to do that. So I really think that uh, the county does need to have a policy but you also need to let us do our jobs because that's what we're elected to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. If y'all want to copy this, I can get it to you. It's not a very good copy because it did fact very well, but it does promote social media. Mr. Buster. Good morning. Good morning. I want to speak to the number eight. Last year, 
at the uh, budget time, I filed my budget request, and I was granted what I had filed. I did not know, and as far as I was concerned, I had a budget that I had asked for. Uh, I had gone to, I did take off about three days last year, and I went, my wife and I and our children all met in New Orleans, which is between here or there. In the process, and I have Bluetooth in my vehicle, so when I get a call, I can hear it. I had a call from the judge saying that uh, I needed to, she wanted me to, and was telling me I needed to fire my assistant from the attorney, which is Betty Yarder. I had three calls from her. And I did, I said, finally I said, no, she's my employee. I will not do that. And I added, and you can't make it. And that was a bad thing for me to do. Because my office was supposed to be run by me. But apparently I threw down the gauntlet and I said, you can't make it. So when I got back, my budget for the county attorney assistant was cut to zero. Who cut it? I don't know. I suspect. The only one that could have legally cut it would be y'all. I don't think that happened unless you all just fell in line and did it. I then asked, I sent a letter to the judge asking to be placed on the agenda because I had to defend myself against a frivolous lawsuit or a frivolous action about the contempt court, and you all remember that. I'm entitled to be reimbursed for that. The judge did not put me on the agenda, but I got a nice letter from people by the name of Denton, Navarro, Rocha, and Bernal. And it's dated December the 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. And it says, Mr. Busson, <coughs> on behalf of the county judge, I am responding to your request for replacement of certain items on the agenda for the Carnes County Commission's Court. These items raise legal and factual issues that must be addressed prior to formal placement on the agenda of the Commissioner's Court. What this says to me is I got to come and, and convince the law firm that I need to be before y'all. That's not their job. Your job is to keep me away from here or let me that. And I have a legitimate claim. The second thing I asked was because of the change in my budget item for, for her, I asked to be placed on the agenda in the same letter to get that straightened out. I will read you the response that I received. Now the judge has put it back on the agenda to do something about it. I mean, and you go ahead and do whatever you want. But when you read this from your counsel, or when you hear this, you may want to change your mind. Second, you are requesting an amendment to the budget of the Office of the County Attorney. Mr. This, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's see what you have to say. No, we're done. It's three minutes. You can have a copy of the opinion. I, I want to compliment you all for In one fell swoop, you come over here, and you put us in a place where we're illegally that's, here. That's enough, Mr. Bussin. Can I finish reading what you have? You can. You can't stay out here. No, but I have the right to read what he has. What do you mean, I don't have the right? You cannot tell me I have the right or not, Judge. Mr. Vidari, we will keep order in here, and I'm the presiding officer, and everybody has three minutes. No, but you're trying to tell me that I have the right. I don't want to argue. I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to number six. The next yes, item is to discuss it. I apologize. The next, Mr. Pedori, there's a zero tolerance policy and no one is exempt. <laughs> discuss, approve, disapprove, assisting the Corn City Fire Department with yes. insurance for the rescue truck and for the new tanker being purchased for the county. And that's Mr. Molly. Hey, Charlie. How you doing, Charlie? Good morning. I want to thank y'all for the opportunity to be here this morning and address the court. Uh, I'm here today because the last time this subject was brought up, I was homesick, was not able to be here to provide what I feel like is some pertinent information that you may need uh, in considering uh, the funding of the insurance on the rescue truck. I'd like to have, once again ask y'all to consider that funding on that truck, and also I'm going to ask for funding on another truck that's in the future and ask y'all to consider placing these uh, this funding into your future budget so it can be handled. <clears throat> I'll take you back in time to 1986 when the Carnsey Rotary Club did a fundraiser and purchased a set of rescue tools that was known by most people as the Jaws of Life. Uh, <clears throat> those tools were donated to the county. They were placed in an old retired ambulance. They were parked here behind the sheriff's office with the understanding that county deputies would operate these tools at incidents. A year and a half later, in September 1987, we were asked by the county to take over the operation of these tools, and we accepted, and they were brought to us along with the old ambulance. 
we were to operate the tools, in return the county would ride the ambulance, provide the maintenance on the ambulance, and the insurance. In 1990, when we received a grant to buy a new 1990 uh, one-ton rescue truck, we came back to Commissioner's Court. We asked them to please provide $700 per year in insurance and costs to help us uh, operate these truck. In exchange for that, the old ambulance, the maintenance on it, the insurance on it, everything else from that went away. So it's kind of a wash. Um, instead of paying for that, they would pay for this, and they agreed. In 2004, when we needed a larger rescue truck because of all the added equipment that came along, <clears throat> we came back to the county. We asked for the payment to be increased to $1,200, and it was. Now, I don't know if that approval came through the proper channels, but I do know that we did come in good faith. We came in properly asked that this be done, and it was done for many years. <clears throat> now here, nine years later, the $1,200 came into question. I don't know what was said at the last meeting. As I said, I was not here, <clears throat> but I felt like I needed to come and, and bring you all some of this information to help you better understand where this started out and how we got to where we're at and ask y'all to once again consider doing this to help us better protect the citizens of Corn County. After all, it was the county that came to us in the first place and asked us to take over this operation and, and made some promises to us. <clears throat> we have not backed down on our promise to operate this equipment. <clears throat> and last year alone, we were called out for 42 different rescue-related incidents. <clears throat> in addition, I'm sure you've heard that we're in the process of acquiring a 3,000-gallon water tanker truck to provide much-needed water supply in the rural areas of the county. <clears throat> With few exceptions, there are basically no hydrants out in the county area for fire protection purposes. <coughs> this has been needed for many years, and thanks in part to our local energy companies that are helping us to get their financial support and helping us to get this project rolling. <clears throat> uh, we will soon have this truck available in Carnes County. We are actually advertising for bids at this time. And with the added support of our local citizens who are, are making some very generous donations, we do see this coming to pass very quickly. We have been working with all the departments in the county. This is not just the Corn City Fire Department thing. <clears throat> the oil companies came to us with this proposal. They asked us to operate it for all of the county, and we agreed to do that. We, <clears throat> they, a lot of the reason we were selected is because we are a 501c3 nonprofit corporation, which allows them to legally make donations for this cause, both through the energy companies and through the local donors. But we've been working with all the departments in the county to design and build a truck that will meet the needs of all of the departments. It's not just our plan, it's a plan that's supported by everybody. <clears throat> what I would like to ask y'all to do today is to consider the approval of the funds for the rescue truck and also for this new tanker that's going to be used all, for all of Carnes County. We did address this issue at a meeting with all of the department heads <clears throat> and they've also pledged their support for this. I've gotten some figures together on the insurance on the rescue truck along with the cost of insuring over $100,000 worth of equipment that is on that truck. The cost of that is approximately $1,032. The insurance estimate, and it's only an estimate on that truck, not knowing the exact final cost will be, the insurance estimate on that truck is approximately $1,153 for a total of $2,185. And like I say, at this time, I'd just like to ask you all to consider the approval of this so that it can be placed in your future budgets. Okay. and ask that it be an ongoing and not an annual comeback for more. Are you looking at 2185 <clears throat> That's the total we project, and that's an estimate. I just, I, I want to add, I don't know if any of y'all have talked to uh, Mr. Pippen or Don. I did talk to Mr. Pippen. I, I talked to him the other day, and I, when this was on the agenda, I, I handed him down, and he did reiterate the fact that we had made a gentleman's agreement with you, and then we just backed out. No. It was actually in the court minutes in 1990 to approve the $700. <clears throat> the 1200 when we came back, I honestly do not know if that ever went to commissioner's court or if it was just said, yes, we will do it. But even if the 1200 was not officially approved in a, in a meeting, the $700 agreement should have still been binding and should have never gone away. We do have court documents to that effect. <clears throat> but we did come in good faith, we did ask, we did explain the need, and it was approved. <clears throat> and I don't understand why, if they felt like it wasn't properly done, why didn't it become properly done instead of being completely thrown out? And if it was thrown out, why didn't the $700 still stand? <clears throat> but there again, I wasn't here, I don't know what Mr. Pippen said, I don't know. He got put out and <clears throat> said the city had just paid it. 
yeah, I don't know what the agreement, but that's that's gone. All we're asking is let's look into the future and see if we can do something to take care of this. The county does pay twelve hundred dollars a year towards this title Jaws of Life maintenance, but it up it until it was a, discontinued a year ago. Yes. No, we still pay monthly hundred dollars a month. A one hundred dollar a month agreement though is for maintenance on mm -hmm. the tools. That was a completely separate issue that was addressed. Back in uh, 2000, uh, we needed to do maintenance on the rescue tools that is owned by the county. We came to the county commissioners. We asked them to approve the maintenance on the tools, which at that time in 2000 was about $1,000. They asked us to do the same preventative maintenance every two or three years. So we came, asked them to pay for that funding. They agreed to pay for it and established a deal to pay us $100 per month to do maintenance in the future so we would not have to come back every month. Last year, in the last year, we did that same preventative maintenance. <clears throat> we had to also replace one 100-foot hose on the rescue truck. The cost of that maintenance was $4,065. If we do that every two or three years, and at $100 a month, do you think we're coming out? I'm just telling you what it's been. <coughs> that has nothing to do with the insurance. That's what, well, okay. But there has not been anything on record okay, that's or a motion that's as long as I've been here, so therefore the court needs to take appropriate action. What, what we can do, Charlie, is you're looking for come budget time. Are you looking for any money now? If you do that, we have to amend some. I'm not asking you. You're either. just making sure we're all on the same page about problem. budget time, so <laughs> we don't get items. thrown off the bus. I'm looking at the future. He said that you can set a next year's budget to take any emergency year. amendments from coming I mean, up. You know, we'll I think fine. anybody might need the Jaws a lot. I mean, you go all over the county. It's not like you cover Corn City. Yes. You go everywhere. And both of these trucks are countywide. Countywide. We operate them, but they are run countywide because not every department needs all of this. So we agreed to do it for the whole county. And I agree with you, Charlie, because the budget, the upcoming budget year, we need to look at, in my opinion, we need to look at uh, funding the insurance as well as maybe increasing the maintenance uh, don't uh, amount to, the, to, to uh, repair the jaws. And also, I think of the county as a whole, and the county has set a precedent back what year, Charlie? They denied the, the, county, the county gave a... Uh, in 1980, uh, no, 1990, when they actually gave no, the Prior for the truck, for a fire truck Nin for Palms County. Mm -hmm. No, which deal? The original. original 1987 one. Well, no, back in the 20s or 30s, they actually the county provided funding back for Back in 1941, 40 the county actually, or 41, 42, 43, actually. But I already think, too, in the upcoming budget year, we need to look at probably somehow helping fund this new water tanker truck because it's it's county it's a countywide issue, I don't, and the cities are, are providing funding for their departments and stuff, and, in, and we're using a lot of the resources out in the county. And I think in the upcoming budget year, we need to look at doing some additional funding for that. If we run short, we can come back and talk about that at that time. But the oil companies have pledged $150,000. We're taking bids. We're expecting bids. Hopefully not to exceed $225,000. Uh, <coughs> local citizens are coming forward. We feel like before the end of this year, we will have the money to do that. But if we do run short, our, our fire department, has, our members have agreed that we will do whatever it takes. If we run short, we will find the money to make it happen. <clears throat> Y'all know from our fundraiser in 1996 for a new brush truck and from 2002 and 2003 to buy a new rescue truck, our guys aren't going to back down. They're going to see it through the end. It's not just a dream. It's going to be a reality. I'd make a motion that we approve item C. We're at 2185 here in budget time? Yes. All in favor say aye. Uh, we're, we're approving something for the next budget. Well, that's what they're asking. But, 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 you know, for us to put it in. That's the just an budget. estimate. Though, that it's an estimated. Yeah. yeah. But just so he'll know, we don't back out on anything. No, oh, yeah, I understand. But it's, uh, it's Herb, is Herb here? Herb, there you are. Okay, we're, we're doing this for the next budget year, and I'm 100%. I mean, I know they need it and everything. So, all right, if we go ahead and make this motion now, even though it's not going to be put into the next budget year, that's fine. Well, it's not a legal thing. It's a business. You know, there's nothing, I mean. No, because we're making a notation. It's a notation. Right. There's no legal. <coughs> all right, so all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie.
Be careful. Blessings to you. <laughs> Comes in and does a uh, body count. <laughs> number seven is discuss, approve, disapprove. James T. Phillips, the non-paid deputy reserve constable, precinct number four, Arthur Fernando Rios. Hello, Fernando. Good morning. Sir. How are you? Fine. How are you doing, sir? Good to see you. Very busy. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. The uh, reason I'm here, and I'm trying to put James Troy Phillips as a reserve deputy constable in non-paid. He had been here before, before he went to the sheriff's office and then went to the city of Post. And I'm trying to bring him back over here. And basically, non-paid, he rides with me whenever we do something on special occasions, anything else that presides. Uh, I know you're familiar with James. I'm not sure if I've ever met the young man. He's pretty solid. He's got all his training. He's got some background. Okay, I make a motion we approve James T. Phillips for non-paid deputy reserve constable for uh, Mr. Uh, Rios. I'll say sir. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Five zero. Thank you for not being Tell Troy thank you, James. Mm -hmm. Number eight is discussion action regarding disbursement of county funds from the county attorney's line item substitute county attorney and assistant county attorney. I put it this on the agenda. as requested by Mr. Hancock, actually. He came to me wanting to work through his budget. Mr. Hancock, why don't you come up here and talk with us? <coughs> and he gave me a copy of his budget. Why don't y'all, let me see this here. Let me hand this out. This wasn't even packaged because it's research. Research. Kill a tree. Now I lost my junior. So I said, I'll take my junior. What did I do with my agenda? See if I handed one of you on my agenda. Here it is. You have it? Yeah. If y'all will look at me, look with me on there's a top page with a bill from Betty Yarder. If you'll turn the page. That's not what we're discussing right now. What we're discussing is Mr. Hancock had a negative balance on a line item of assistant county attorney for $1,125. He asked me where that came from. I don't know. I can't answer that question. You want to know why Mr. Hancock came to me or how this became about? You can look and see. You have Local 4 of the Local Government Code, which says, I'm the county judge, I'm the budget officer, I'm supposed to know this in the budget. You know there was an assistant county attorney line item in the budget. You're talking for this year? Mm -hmm. Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? By yeah, or I can explain that. Which one? Where is the one you're telling me? <laughs> but if you look at the budget on page 15, there is no line item for assistant county attorney. This is the budget from the clerk's office that was filed. And there was no not, nothing in there. The reason so, that expenditure was made for that line item is that's for services rendered from the current budget through a, September 30th, and payroll was October 3rd or something along that line. That is why there is $1,125 expense from that line item, because it was services rendered by Mrs. Jordan in the prior fiscal year. When the auditors completed the audit, they make journal entries accruing wages back to the fiscal year. There has not been, out of this fiscal year budget, monies expended for a assistant county attorney. There has been for a substitute county attorney. And there is another pending invoice that will be in the next bill cycle for a substitute county attorney. But the court, at the time of the budget adoption, voted not to have an assistant county attorney where it had been budgeted before, but it was changed to a substitute county attorney 
because Barbara reiterated that she was the only one that had the authority to approve a substitute county attorney. Well, I got you the statute on that too. Because it goes back to county attorney because we came to court last time and there was a bill presented by Betty Yarder. And this goes back to the substitute council attorney is missing $400. Herb told me he got a bill from Betty that he said he could not approve. And then I asked the one in court and she said she, that Herb did approve it. And Herb gave me a copy saying he didn't approve it. Herb had told me verbally to put it back in the next cycle, which I did. It was faxed to him. I don't know if it was inadvertent that it was not approved. But that check has not been issued. It is still currently in the possession of the county auditor's office. And if you look and see what the statute says on appointing those, and you got your, it's all in here, your practice county special from Westlaw. Your, another letter from Vint Navarro, and it was about uh, substitute county attorney and whatever. And I don't think, I specifically said, I, what I told you is a judge can only appoint. And they can only appoint, and it tells you in code why they can appoint. If, so if the DA is absent from the district or the county attorney is absent from the county, the judge can appoint somebody to fill in their position. And I did, Mr. Hancock did go somewhere, but when I called him, I asked him, I said, are you coming in today? He says, no, he was somewhere far away. And I said, are you in Carnes County today? And he says, no. I said, can you be back today? And he said, no. And we had to do a protective hearing that day. And so I said, is it okay if I appoint somebody to come take your place? And he said, yes. And I appointed Lee. Lee has a party back there. He did that. And presented us with a bill of exactly what took place that day. And so that's where it comes down to, we need to figure out what's going on with these bills and whatever. Mr. Hancock, if you'll say it's a discussion action in regard to disbursements. Mr. Hancock at one point in time asked me for a forensic audit of his account, so he'd know exactly what he had. Is that true? I don't, I don't have an idea. And so um, he shouldn't be in this position. So if you look back at all this statute and all this law, the only reason that we need to get it done right And you'll see that we can on page seven of the local 111 of the local government code, we can make changes in the budget for county purposes as long as they're for county purposes. On section uh, 81, 81002, it says the commissioner's court will not vote or consent to make a payment of county funds except for a lawful purpose. I do not know what judge appointed anybody for these fees. What judge appointed you? You did. No, I, I did that. not. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. what, the, what the situation was, if you want, if you want to know no, what, if you want an explanation for the That's enough. That's, I'm not talking to you. I'm not going to argue with the court, but <laughs> I asked you this question and you don't let her respond yeah. to it the, and answer the, it? The bill was created and it, because we had juvenile hearings and we had JP hearings at the same yeah. time. Took her out. And we needed two uh, prosecutors to handle it on that particular day in December. I don't recall the date because it's been several months since I sent the invoice. But the date was the date, and Jamie came to you and told you that, that, that we needed a prosecutor for uh, the two females that were in there, and one of them was a 10 year old with a gun. I remember that. And I can guarantee you that's enough. I have never appointed you or never would appoint you for anything. <laughs> that's nice. And so I'm done. But anyway, if we can get an affidavit that's a lawful purpose to approve that bill, it can be done. I have never, ever appointed Betty. When I appointed Lee, he knew I appointed him. He showed up and we worked together. So, do you want a forensic audit of your budget? Is that what you're asking for today? I just want to know what money I've got. I want to be able to let the paper look at what money I've spent and how it's been spent. And I want it in a way where I can understand uh, uh, what I've got in order that I don't go over a line item. And these items are lined out and I have to stay within the budget uh, that's given to me uh, from last year and that's the only objective that I have at this time. And there's no way I can tell uh, what's going on as far as the budget is concerned. If you look at the one that's on the website, it says one thing. 
if you look at the uh, expenditures and the way they're set out, it says something else. I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I'm just saying that we have got to get, or I have got to get a budget that I can recognize and that I can follow and know what I'm spending. And I don't know that. <coughs> Sorry, do you I would like to at least defend myself. No, Mr. Bedore, that's enough. We're going on and we're doing this. If you want to come do this, I'm not going to argue with y'all. This is Mr. Hancock's budget, and this is what we're doing. We're fixing it for Mr. Hancock. Mr. Bedore, I gave that's him enough. a copy of a letter that says you can't do that. Mm -hmm. From your lawyers, you need Mr. Bedore. <laughs> So are you asking for a forensic audit? Did you want us to put another item on the agenda for a forensic audit? You have to, uh, I think you have to amend the budget and I don't know that we can do that today. It's not on the agenda okay. and uh, I would like to address it when it's on the agenda. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Hancock. We'll put it on the next agenda for you. I have a question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, I'm looking at this, at this budget. Now, let's say County Attorney Juvenile Court. That's what we're talking about, right? That's the amount, that's the amount, that's the amount, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no? Isn't that a salary supplement, county attorney? You get the salary supplement for juvenile courts. Mrs. Harder, oh, can't That's where the minus 125. Oh, that one, yeah, it says juvenile court. Yeah, but look, what I'm saying is, as we're looking at this, last year there was like $9,000 that was. Because you had $25,000 uh, oh. in the county attorney budget last year, in your, the last fiscal year. Oh, I thought I'd ask. Thank you, Mr. Hancock. Thank you, sir. Number nine is to discuss, approve, disapprove, developing, adopting a policy to block social networks such as Facebook from county computers and county mm -hmm. I said, I agree to take no action on the Mary. Yes. We will uh, request to go out and get the next one, is with Mr. Hancock's request. Um, I, put, I put the social media thing on there, and one of the numerous reasons that I put it on there as everybody says that they're very budget conscious, we are paying numerous dollars in conflicker viruses for the computer for Jeff to sit here all day and figure out what computers those are coming from. Uh, we've talked about this in the past. A lot of the other counties already have it blocked. Yes, some counties might use it. We don't have a Clarence County Facebook page. We don't have anything like that. The deal with it's not an individual office. Every office is in control of their own software, which is an exact true statement. But this social media comes through one server, and it's called Carnes County. And that bill comes through Carnes County. It doesn't. There's not individual servers, so it has nothing to do with an individual office. And the bill comes to Carnes County. I verified it through Dodds. I verified it through everybody else. So if you gave that all, let each department handle that. Well, there, in other words, it all comes into the county, so there's no budget. Right. It's all it's all a it county it. server and it comes to the county and that's why I get all the conflicter notices and that's why I know there's so many. But those also come from emails. Are we going to be banned from email as well? Because it's not just. I'm not answering more questions. I'm going to go. I'm, everybody already has to know the facts before you can verify. You have to know the facts before you can verify. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Facebook has been used by many departments. San Antonio PD, I prosecuted many harassment cases for individuals. If our department is banned from accessing Facebook, I won't access it from here to get a warrant signed. If that young lady walks out of my department and gets shot and killed because of family violence, my hands are clean of it because I can't access it anymore. As a law enforcement entity, it is a tool we use to prosecute. Please don't put family violence victims in danger just because of the social media website. I have printed up things of, I will kill you, I will cheat your family, I will do everything I can to harm you. If that is bought from our computers, I won't be able to download it. I won't be able to walk a warrant from my office, and I'm not going to use my personal computer because that's official business. So that is 
my conception of it, and we need to allow it. Law enforcement is in everything else. A lot of counties allow law enforcement to have it and actually provide law enforcement their own server so that they may control that server to um, be able to actually do more than that because the sheriff has tools that he can install on a computer that cannot be installed on anybody else's computer, that he can network with the DA and he can do all that other kind of stuff. And it'd probably be in the best interest at some point in time to give the sheriff department their own server. So he will have those tools. I totally agree with you. Plan on talking to you about that at budget time to help you get all that stuff that you need to do. Brenda? I just have one thing. If you're going to pursue some kind of a blocking software, would you please it's just a sonic wall. I'll tell you, I'm, I use every software. If we have maintenance problems on our mapping computer, I can call them up. They open up a chat window with that social media so that if we're loading something, they can get off the phone line, I can get off the phone line and answer questions. But as soon as my computer is ready to go, I can let them know the chat that, hey, everything's loaded, can we please proceed? So I know at least our office uses that for Esri. ACOG is short staffed right now. They're also using some of the similar items. I don't know if some of the other offices, I know at the clerk's office, there's networking to get to um, Hill Country software to where they can see our computer. We need to make sure that's not blocked. Hill Country cannot be blocked. Nothing authorized by your department can be blocked. So nothing authorized by your department can be blocked. If it comes to the Carnes County server, your software has nothing to do with this. None whatsoever. And it's on the server. No, it's not it's on the server. server. Okay, so if you don't have Facebook, none of your problems are? No, 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 no. I'm not talking the about the software that you use on the computer is on the server. And right. so are you saying if we authorize Facebook? No, 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 no. We do... authorize that. We don't the county does not authorize fa Facebook. We are getting major control here. We are spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in virus protection because people are opening stuff they should not be opening. And then that includes emails because we opened one from Listserv and it did the same thing. So are you well, going to block Listserv as well? No, but Facebook Facebook, and social media is the thing blocked on many county computers. Pete went to ACOG yesterday, and what was the big discussion? All right, I went, I went uh, social media training. We had a social media training class at Sentinel last year, and they said, be careful about using these, don't abuse it, et cetera, and, and some of them said there's blocks. Yesterday at, at ACOG, I had lunch with four judges and one county commissioner. And brought up this, well, we're going to have Facebook. They want to know what's happening in Corn County. So, well, we're going to have Facebook discussion at Commissioner's Court tomorrow. All of them said, we have it blocked. Facebook is blocked. Four other judges and one county commission. So, but, that, but you can go behind four that have it open because I did. There's clerk's but, offices that, when there's, separate clerk's offices are putting on there when juries are canceled. There's all kind of information that you can put out there. And if you have the virus protection, whether you have Facebook or email, you can still get a virus, but we have a sonic wall up already, and it is blocking things um, by default like uh, guns, se um, sex, porn. It's blocking all those already, but, and but the other the, thing that's is, where the viruses are coming from. They come from emails. When, you, when we go to uh, risk management training, you're not supposed to use county computers for personal use anyway. But you're it's not, not personal to do use. It. It's Facebook for county business. And it's we have a web page. That we, we have a web page that we pay for. Carnes County doesn't have a Facebook page or a Twitter page. How many people can post on that web page? Anybody can. You just call Brittany Lane and get a number. We pay for it. Anybody can have an email address that belongs to the county. Yes, that is set up through why? Uh, I when you came into office, you took that over, and I don't. Your your lady that. post on it, right? She posts I your stuff. I post on it because you're the one that decided all of a sudden that you were to post the agendas and whatnot on it, and your email. Anybody can do it. Anybody can. No, post it on no, it. it's yes. Everybody, 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 everybody. You can get. You can go to training if you want to be on it. And actually, the county clerk's supposed to be on it. She's supposed to post post the budget. County clerk's on. It. No, I, I post it, but not on the internet. And that's not what the code says, but it's a the population. Count. And I'm not, I, I'm not, but anybody can get on our county website, anybody. We're in the court, you can get on it to look at it, but you so there's the only administrative use. Time out, time out. I've heard a lot of stuff today about this Facebook. I'm starting to get really irritated. One, there's, some, there's something that was said earlier that makes some common sense to me is we need to get a Facebook policy in place, a social media policy. I think we need to get a policy in place. Go ahead and block everything, in my opinion, temporarily till we get a policy in place and then go back and do it. You can let law enforcement have their have their server 
whatever the case may be. I have yet to see any Facebook page for the county at all that says, I don't think you have one, I don't think the auditor has one, I don't think the district clerk has one to do that. I don't, I don't know y'all if y'all have a page. I don't think, think the tax office has a page. I don't think IEMS has a page. Nobody, I know the sheriff's office, I don't think you have a page. Only one I think has a page of, for Facebook in the county is Kenny PD. They have a Facebook page. And all there is is strictly for, I believe, just information. And I agree with Facebook for, for social media information. I agree with that. Bye, we talked about that here a while back, about possibly doing something like that. Not blocking. But, Facebook page, yes, but not blocking. But, you can't block everything because you don't know what I need to do to run my office. You are trying to run my office. It's a personal issue. It's not going to block anything. Yes, it, it already does. does. Yes, it You will. tested it. You tested it when Jeff put it in. <coughs> yes, you did. <laughs> okay, then Jeff lies to me. The, the sonic wall is up, and, it, and it's already blocking the things that people, by accident, It can block shouldn't. Facebook. It can just block Facebook and social media. That is it. And that comes to Carnes County. That does not block anybody's ability to do their job. Nobody has to have Facebook to do their job. It's a resource. It's a resource. That's a web page. That's how I learned about the HR and social media web page through their Facebook page. The Texas Jail Standards has a Facebook page. A lot of your sheriff's department has a Facebook page. Again, it goes back to us being adults and supervising our employees. If they are on Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, blogs, you probably know more social media than I do, so maybe Instagram, <laughs> then that's where they're, our job as supervisors come in. The agenda item says to have a policy. We have a policy management committee. What's the point of that policy management committee if you guys are just going to do everything you feel like you need to do? Shelby, may, may I ask you something? Back last year, you said that you were going to visit the offices, and, and you did. You, you've been looking about coming and asking questions. Before you guys make a decision on this, would you come around and ask some questions again and let us show you what we do and what, what the, the <coughs> potential problem is with blocking this and what our plans are to do, would you at least do that? You don't have to make a decision today, but at least let us show you these things. How does Bear County run, Town Green County run, Travis County run, Guadalupe County run, Colmel County run, when they all have Facebook blocks? How do they run? I mean, are they that much smarter than us that they can work around Facebook? Are we not doing our jobs? I mean, well, we this is social media. Facebook this is personal stuff. Media? If we're not doing our job to the citizen, we go out and inform of that, some of us that about a year that we're not doing our job. Rose even told me, he said, you know, it's blocked for us. Allison Bass and Associates told me most people block it, and they're able to work. Well, Judge, yesterday I did go, I met with offices, uh, the heads, some employees and everything, and I just got some information on why we shouldn't do that, and with your permission, I read yeah. this. Every elected department head has control of how their office and personnel are to be managed. It is not it is not the job or the responsibility of the county judge or commissioner's court to micromanage anyone's office, which I agree with that. Twitter, Facebook, Google, Yahoo, etc. are used to assist in obtaining information for questions that any and all county offices may have concerning matters within or related to their office. Also said social communications have been used in assisting the public to find answers to their questions, especially when they do not have said resources readily available to them. Many county offices and employees have email accounts that are through Yahoo, Hotmail, and various other internet providers. These are used to send and receive emails, information, court filings, and news from other offices, uh, court coordination, judges, law enforcement agencies, etc. In addition to sending out or receiving information on via conventional mail outs and listservs, Twitter and Facebook are now being utilized in distributing and receiving valuable information. It is up to the, it is up, most, most people have this to say, it is up to a department head to decide how many how any and all forms of social media are to be managed within their office. And I agree with that. I agree with that too, but I still think we need to have a policy in place before that is put into, before social media is really put in place. Should we make a policy before we block it? Yes. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think we need to more people are going to Mr. Yard, would you like to speak on the posting on the floor? Yes, Texas, if you look up the manual fund for uh, computers and, uh, and other than what? Policy. Texas Workforce Commission 
clearly states that Texas law requires that first there must be a policy in place before you can a computer policy before a decision like this is made. That's number one. Number two, once that policy is in place, it's required by state law that every individual has to sign it. Every employer has to sign it. The, uh, okay, that, that's enough. But we're, we're going to take legal advice from our attorneys and not from every citizen in there. And I know you're not an attorney. So we're going to go ahead and move forward. If y'all want to do something. We have no attorneys. Mr. Vidari, where are you? They've never been hired. By Mr. Vidari, where are you? That is enough. <laughs> we have no attorneys. If, if somebody wants to fire Denton Navarro and others, please put it on the agenda. We didn't fire Joe when we came into office. We didn't fire anybody else. Yeah, so any, anything that was done by the previous court is still done. We're not going to go and do everything they did. And so if anybody has a problem with that or they want to do something with it, you bring it up and let's do something with it. Until then, they're our legal authority. Them and Mr. Hancock, nobody else. The county has no contractual obligation with the former county attorney or his former assistant. We're going to move forward. Mr. Bedori, that's enough of him. I'm done. Please. There's a zero tolerance who needs to go. It's been enough. Uh, who are we going now? We're going to be in recess until this situation is taken care of. as long as I did? Yeah. <laughs> and I tried to you know, retire three times and was talked out of it each time I because I was a nice kid and I get shit out. And you put that in the paper. Okay. It just never ends. It never ends. Constantly. Eddie wanted you to have this. Oh, thank you. Uh, also, I did all the research. Clinton and Navarro have never been hired. Mm -hmm. I remember when that came up, I guess, about a year ago. So you can't fire somebody you have to hire. What they have done in the past, and all, this whole thing is illegal. Yeah, I remember Mr. They said they had some sort of a verbal agreement or something. Like verbal agreement don't bite. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't no, matter. He should know that. He does know that. <laughs> but I have all the research at home. I mean, I have every commissioner's court agenda, every one of them. It's an ongoing issue. Yeah. Appreciate it, Mike.